evening prayer meeting. If you have the Bible, look at the Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Luke chapter 5, 1 to 11. Book of Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people ground, uh, crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left uh, there by the fishermen who were washing their net. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down the net for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the net. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their net began to break. So they signed, uh, uh, signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled uh, the boat, boat and so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a simple man. For he and all the companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partners, then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they pulled, pulled their boat up on shore, left everything, Followed him. Today, I would like to share with you: obey Jesus, obey God immediately. <laughs> you know, there's three kind of obey: obey God immediately. Number one, obey God immediately, and number two, obedience: obey God 100%. Actually, even you obey God 99.99999, still disobey. 100% obedience and obey God constantly. Three area of obedience: obey God immediately. Obey God 100%, obey God constantly. If you obey these three areas, you are a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know Jesus used the boat of Simon Peter? And why Jesus used the boat? And then the boat need to be, need to be, need to be uh, leave from the shore. And when Jesus was preaching, <laughs> you know what they do, what Jesus used to do? Jesus used the wind <laughs> to take his message to the crowd. <laughs> you know, pulpit, his pulpit is uh, in the small boat. <laughs> I mean, the, the Peter's uh, 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 fisherman's boat. And he was preaching. The message got to the, all the people's heart who sit on the ground. And um, very interesting, Jesus knew they couldn't catch any fish in the all night. But Jesus said, put out into deep water and let down the net for the catch. There's no fish in the deep water. The, wo the fish is uh, moving in the shallow water, not deep water. But Jesus said to Peter, you can throw your net in deep water. Actually, this is a nonsense. When Jesus said to people, deny yourself and take your cross, and follow me. What does it mean deny yourself? Deny yourself means you have to deny three areas. Deny your knowledge, deny your emotion, and deny your will. What Peter deny? Deny T Peter deny his knowledge. What is knowledge? You know Peter, he knew there's no fish in the deep water. He denied his knowledge. When Jesus said to disciples and people, you need to deny yourself. Deny yourself means you need to deny three areas. Deny your what? Knowledge. Deny your what? Emotion. And deny your what? Your will. In our soul, three areas in our soul. Unfortunately, many people, they don't deny themselves. They live by their own knowledge, own emotion, own will. 
But think about that. When Jesus died on the cross, yeah, his blood come out from where? From where? Here. Yeah. Roman soldiers push on his head, <coughs> thrown gun bush and bleeding. It's your knowledge. You need to deny your knowledge. And then blood come out from where? Chest. <coughs> your emotion here, yeah, emotion. <coughs> Normal soldier spears on his chest. Blood and water come out. You see? Your emotion. Yeah, your emotion. Your knowledge and your emotion. And Jesus died on the cross and uh, blood come out from where? Two hands and feet. This is your will. Do you understand? You just come down by your feet. You, do you understand? If you control these three areas, your knowledge, your emotion, and your will, yeah, by the Holy Spirit, you are true disciples of Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? If you look at um, Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> when Jesus finished the preaching, eh, he asked Simon, put out the deep water and let down the net for a catch. There's no fish in deep water. Yeah? There's no fish in deep water. I was in Israel. I went to Israel 21 times. And then every, since 1996, I went to Israel to preach the gospel. Next year, February, I'll go to Israel. Already over 20 people booking already, 22 people booking. And uh, around the 40 people, between 40 to 50 people go to Israel to preach the gospel. But <coughs> I still remember, in the evening time, around 9.30, before the 10 o'clock in the evening, I brought our team near the Sea of Galilee. There's a Sea of Galilee. I saw the fish, fishing uh, boat. But we never, ever seen this kind of uh, things. Around the sixth boat, Small boat is a fisherman. They surround. Do you know what I saw? I saw the one, two, three, four boats surround. And there are two boats in the in the middle. Actually, this six boat is not deep in the Galilee. It's near the shallow. But I saw the two boats. They do you know what they do? Inside of inside of their boat, they have the big drum. <laughs> this drum. In the night time. <coughs> what they do? These four boats, they put the net all around. And then these two boats, you know, inside, you know what they do? They do big you know, drumstick, bang, 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 like this. I never ever seen how they catch the fish in the Sea of Galilee. And then they catch the plenty fish. Because when they're banging, the fish is surprised, shock, and they run away and go to the net and catch the fish. Fish inside the shallow water, not deep water. But look, what Jesus said to Peter, threw your net in where? Deep water. Think about them. What was the main job of Jesus before he became public life? Yeah. Carpenter. Carpenter. This man, Peter, he's a professional fisherman. According to fishermen's uh, you know, knowledge, there is no fish in deep water. But Peter, he need to what? Deny his, himself, his knowledge. And his emotion, he made thought. I was working very hard to try to catch the fish, but I couldn't catch any fish. But he used to be a carpenter. Carpenter advised me, professional fisherman. He need to be upset, he need to be angry and uh, tired. He's a fed up. Emotion is not very good. And his will? No, no, I don't want to do it. <coughs> I will do that in shallow water, not deep water. But what Peter did, look at verse 5. Luke chapter 5, verse 5 is a revelation. If you understand this scripture, your life will transform. Luke chapter 5, verse 5. Simon answered, Master, we have, we have to work the hard all night. Heaven caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the net. Can you say it to me? Because you say so. Because you, Jesus, you say so, I deny my knowledge. I deny my emotion. I deny my will. I will obey. I will obey. There's three kinds of obedience. Number one, obedience, obey God immediately. Number two, obey God 
Is obedience or disobedience? If you obey 99.99999, obey or disobey? <laughs> Almost obey, but dis disobey. <laughs> and then three kind of in obey God immediately, obey 100%, and obey God constantly. Yeah, you, you serve Jesus, you follow Jesus only 30 years, and after 30 years you don't follow Jesus. No, no, this is, no, no. You have to follow Jesus constantly. Obey God constantly. This is scripture. Peter denied his knowledge, his emotion, his will. And he said, because you say so, I obey. He denied himself, denied his knowledge, his emotion, his will. And then they catch the plenty of fish. You see, if you obey God, there is a fruit. If you obey God, there is a plenty of fruit. If you disobey God, yeah? You just live on your will, on your knowledge, on your emotion, <laughs> on your knowledge. Very, very hard. You know, I discover one thing from the Genesis to Revelation, when the miracle comes to this world, when? <coughs> you know, in this world, if you have the problem, problem need what? You need miracle. Miracle come from heaven. <coughs> Bang it. Problem. Miracle, you know, Jesus brought a miracle. Miracle need one problem. <laughs> problem need, need one miracle. They need each other. Mm -hmm. And then, in the Bible, one hundred percent of miracle have to deny themselves. Anybody knows then when Elijah was hungry, there's a famine, no water, no rain, no food at all. But Elijah he get the order and go to Syria to see the widow. And what Elijah saw, this widow, she collected the uh, dry, you know, uh, sticks. And Elijah saw her. Do you know what Elijah saw her? What Elijah said to her? Can you make a small bread for me? What she said? <coughs> I collected this, uh, the stick and make the final food for me and my son and will die. That is uh, their conversation. Elijah asking her, give me food. When she say that, my last food, I collect this stick now, make a final food, and I and my son, after that, will we'll, we'll die, we we'll no food. The severe famine, all of them at the time. Even Elijah, he was hungry. Look, Elijah denied three areas. Number one, Elijah, he knows the scripture. Elijah, he, he was a prophet of uh, Israel. He knows the scripture. The Bible says you have to look at the uh, three kinds of people. Who are they? Widow, Widow and? Orphans, orphans and? and the, the, the ill, the, 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 the no. leper. No, stranger. The three, three kinds of people. You have to look at the three kinds of people. Widow, orphans, and stranger. She's a widow. But Elijah, he received the revelation of God. He need to ask him her. He need to obey. Give me that food. <laughs> how do you feel? I'm um, how Elijah's emotion. I think he would have been a bit, a bit guilty. Guilty and <coughs> shame and <A> embarrassed, <laughs> uncomfortable. Yeah. And he's will, he just want to do it. But God gave him order to do it. You see. This man, Elijah, obey God. He deny his knowledge, deny his emotion, deny his will. And how about this widow? This widow, your knowledge. I know this man is very famous, uh, the prophet in Israel. He is the one to kill the, you know, 850 uh, Baal worshiper and Asherah worshiper. He is a well-known prophet in Middle East, but he knew. I'm a widow. He knew. I already told him I don't have enough food. But he looked like a very selfish man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Her knowledge is not right. This man not right. Her emotion, she was very upset. <laughs> so upset. And uh, angry. And then uh, disappointed by this man. And 
do you know if she not deny her will, she may throw away. And uh, okay, I don't want to <laughs> throw away uh, her will. And then you know he can she can throw away the, the small oil and the flour. She can throw away. But what she does, she deny her knowledge, her emotion, her will, and she prepare and gave to her, gave to him. And what was happening? Elijah asked him, bottle, every empty, empty, full of oil. And then she may, she may thought, I wish I can borrow more from next, uh, <laughs> on next village, <laughs> because if she knew. But she overcome this, uh, the hard time. You see, Elijah obey God. When you obey God means you need to deny your knowledge, deny your emotion, deny your will. And then you can obey. We, we just see, look at the Luke chapter 5, <coughs> Luke chapter 5, verse 10. So were well, James and John and son of Jebed and Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid from now on. You will catch men. So they uh, pulled uh, their boat up on the shore and left everything and followed him. Left everything. Because Jesus said to them, Follow me. Follow me. Yeah. You have to obey. When? When? Immediately. Yeah? Immediately. Thank you very much. Immediately. I think I talked to the Mark I think yesterday. Satan like the tomorrow. <coughs> when 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 God asks you to do something, what do you say? I will do it tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, and then God say, can you do it? Okay, tomorrow. <laughs> I'll do tomorrow. <coughs> tomorrow never come. But God always say, do it now. Now, 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 now. <coughs> I still remember, <coughs> I was in the, in the big conference. I was a guest speaker in the big conference in Tanzania, East Africa. They're speaking, do you know uh, Swahili come from Tanzania? I was preaching at the three night conference. And the last night, I saw the very big man, very handsome man, big, big man. And then wife of this man, she came to me. She asked me, can you pray for my husband? Okay, I can pray for him. She said to me, my husband uh, brought me to the church all the time, but he never come to the church. <laughs> Only he's like a minicab driver. <laughs> brought him, brought her to the church. I said, okay, hello, I forget his name. Actually, he, he's, a <coughs> he's a bodyguard of a president of Tanzania. He went to the every, many countries, Japan, England, with the, with the president. He was a very proud man. And I told him, now is the time for you. Can you accept the Lord Jesus? Can you believe in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? You know what he say? No, now. He said, no, now. I say, no, now, now. He said, no, now. Around that time, uh, Swiss airline crashed you know, somewhere in, uh, in Europe, on mountain. One, 133 people died <coughs> over 15 years ago. And I told them, I told him, you know, those who are passing in inside the airplane, they never know what you have in their future. But they died, all of them. I told him, now is the time for you to repent your sins or accept the Lord Jesus. He said to me, not now. <laughs> he denied two times. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me to tell him now. I told him, now is the time to accept the Lord Jesus and your Lord and your Savior. Now. Oh, you know, it is not from me. The Holy Spirit spoke to him, through me, very strongly. And do you know what he said? Okay. <laughs> he knelt down in front of me. He was crying like baby crying. And he asked the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. it is a personal savior. His wife cried. She said, I pray for my husband more, more than 30 years. <laughs> now I never ever expect to see this happening. My husband accepted the Lord Jesus. Always now. Can you look at the scripture? Second Corinthians chapter six, verse one and two. 
Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter six. Second, sec, Second Corinthians, chapter six, verse one and two. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. But he says, "In the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you." I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Do you know? Two times. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. When? Now. Now. Do you know when God is working? Do it now. Do it now. I think what what, what is the the advertisement of Nike? Just do it. <laughs> Have you seen that? Just do it. Yeah, worldly company is just do it, but according to the 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 the, the scripture say, do it now. <laughs> do it now. When God say to you, can you say teacher, do it now? Say teacher, do, do it now. now. When God say to you, do it now. Yeah, thank God. I think three days ago, four days ago, Sister Caroline, she. Repaired our Dyson is a very almost seven hundred pound, you know, electric hoover. She she repaired. I was wondering, in the beginning, oh, what she does <laughs> all day long, all from morning to evening. And then I she repair and uh, I never seen. Thanks to her, she she does it's immediately, immediately. If you are a man and woman of obedience, God can use in you. Do it now. Do it now. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Now, that God, He repented the sins. Uh, he has sent the Lord Jesus, the bodyguard of a president in Tanzania. Thanks be to God. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the time to receive the Lord Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Yeah? And then another scripture, how disciples follow Jesus. Can you look at the Matthew chapter 4? was 19 and 20. You know, Luke, he'll write down like that. But Matthew, he'll write down like this. Matthew chapter 4, 19 and 20. <coughs> Matthew chapter 4, 19 and 20. I can read it for you. Come, follow me, Jesus said. And I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their net and followed him. What does mean at once? Right now, <laughs> immediately. Because that's what people say. Now, now, just now. It's got like ten ways to say now. now yeah, now. what's different? Okay, so you say just now means, yeah, I'm coming now, but in a little while. Now, now means more urgent. Yeah, almost kind of now, but um, just wait a bit. Yeah. What is uh, immediately? Um, now, now, or just, just now? now. It's still just now, now, now is still not very strong. Not yeah? now. <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> okay. Now is now, N O W. <laughs> not just now or now, now, now. <laughs> just one word. Now, someone, now, now. Now, now. They don't mean now. <laughs> now okay. Okay. Very interesting. Mm. And now. You see, disciples, uh, yeah, disciples of Lord Jesus, Jesus said to them, Come, follow me. I will make you a fishers of men. And the disciples, they left everything immediately. Immediately, at the same time, when Jesus' word finished, when they received the word of Jesus, they just obey. That is on Luke chapter 5, verse 5, when Jesus said to them, and Peter said, Because you say so, I will do it. Because I receive your word. Your word is more powerful than my knowledge, my emotion, and my will. I receive your revelation. I will do it now. You see, when you obey God, there's miracles and signs and wonders will follow you. Very important, obey now. Obey God now. Look at Matthew chapter, now Matthew 8. Matthew 8. <coughs> Matthew 8, 8 to uh, 18 to 22. Matthew chapter 8, from verse 18 to 22. When Jesus saw the crowd um, around him, 
he gave, or, gave order to cross the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to Jesus and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nets, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. What does it mean? <coughs> you say the teachers of law follow me? Well done, but <laughs> very hard. <laughs> Can you follow me? Yeah. Foxes, they have their own hall. Birds, they have their own net. But son of man, uh, I'm sorry, there's no proper accommodation for you. For me. You still follow me? He challenged him. And look, another one. Verse 22, another disciple said to him, another disciple means it's quite a <coughs> you know, sometimes um, uh, the disciple is uh, not just the twelve disciples. Some other people also call the disciples. Another disciple said to Jesus, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. You see, somebody respected their own father, attend the funeral service, and they follow Jesus. He said, no, no, let them bury your own, own dead. You just follow me. Which means, follow Jesus more important than the, any other event. Follow Jesus more important than the, any other you know, people. This is a message. It's a very powerful message. <coughs> but I met a Jewish man a few days ago. They see, he knows the scripture. How Jesus say that? Unless you hate your father, mother, your brother, sisters, you never be a disciple of law of me. You must, you, you, Jesus said to me, you, Jesus, hate your family. Then I said to him, you never understand this, the, what Jesus said. He's, and I told him, you are a spiritual blind man. And he was upset because I said to him, you are a spiritual blind man. What Jesus say? love Jesus more than your family. Love Jesus more than any other things. That is meaning. Do you understand? But he couldn't understand. Because I say to him, you are a spiritual uh, blind man, he said, oh, you have anti-Semitism. <laughs> You're against the Jewish people. No, no, I love Jewish people. Jesus, my master, my Lord, my Savior is a Jew. Mm -hmm. And all these disciples are Jews. Why I, ha uh, why, why I uh, hate these people? No, I love them. My Lord and my Savior is Jews. And all his disciples say Jews. I receive the spiritual blessing by Jews. If I, how can I hate this, uh, these people? It's nonsense. I told him. I challenged him. But he was very angry. He wanted recording and he wanted to call the police. I said, call the police. <laughs> recording properly. And then, you know, this is a message. Jesus said to these people, just follow me. Just follow me. But in the Old Testament, uh, when Elijah called Eliza, what was Eliza's job? Eliza, he was a farmer, farmer, farmer. Can you look at 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19. <coughs> 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19. If you look at the 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 to um, 21, it's very interesting how Eliza followed Elijah. 1 Kings chapter 19. Verse 19. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of uh, Sapat. He was uh, ploughing with the twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was uh, driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his uh, cloak around him. What does it mean? He threw his uh, cloak around him. <coughs> his behavior. What, what kind of action? You are my successor. That is the meaning. Ah. You know, Elijah was a powerful prophet in Israel. And he is his own cloth and then like that. Now you need to be a, uh, my disciple, my attendant, and you'll be my successor. That kind of, you know, uh, sign. And look, and verse 20, Elijah, is, Elijah then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. 
Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the blowing equipment and to cook the meat and give it to the people and they ate. And he set out the blowing, uh, he set out to follow Elijah and beca became his attendant. He killed how many oxen? How many cows? <coughs> yeah, <coughs> twelve of them. And then he burned what? He burned what? Blowing equipment. <laughs> what does mean? <laughs> he, his business destroyed. <laughs> he used to be what? Farmer. He need the blowing equipment. He need oxen. He killed. You know when he when he cook. He need the wood, yeah? He using this uh, blowing equipment. You see, this man, Elisha, he, <coughs> he destroyed his buildings. <laughs> Nothing left. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah? I don't know. The, can you think about uh, what you used to be what? You uh, used to learning the restaurant. your restaurant, yeah? You used to... <coughs> yeah? Very well like Elisha, yeah? You see, very important. This man, Elisha, yeah, left everything, immediately, left everything. He cannot go back to his worldly life, worldly life anymore. Do you remember when, when Jesus died on the cross and disciples, they went back to Galilee for what? They fish him again. <laughs> Did they catch many fish? No. They received the calling to be a what? Fishers of men. They need to catch the fish. No, no. They need to catch men. But they go back to their world life again. They try to catch fish. Can you look at the John chapter 21? John chapter 21. Actually, <coughs> verse 3. John chapter 21, verse 3. I am going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we will go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But they, that night, they caught how many? Nothing. Nothing. Is it good news or bad news? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Bad news, good news. It's good news. Yeah. <laughs> it's good news. If they catch plenty of fish, they say, you see, now, we wasted our life with the you know, Rabbi Jesus for three and a half years. Now, let us work properly. You catch the more fish. No, they catch nothing. Good for them. When you receive the calling, yeah? if you go back again for worldly life again, <coughs> there's no fruit. Thank God, you know, you know how, to, how to use the computer <laughs> You want to use everything for the glory of the law. Yeah. You know, at the moment, I use not only Facebook Live, I, I, I preaching, but you know how to, <laughs> you know, using it for widely, for globally. Uh, you can do it for, for, for the glory of the Lord, not for me, for, for him, for, for, for Jesus, yeah. His for his kingdom. You can using it for the glory of God. These people, disciples, they try to catch fish all night. Even, look, verse 4, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. <laughs> Can you imagine? They spent time with Jesus for three and a half years. Now, they couldn't recognize that. If somebody yeah, focus on the money, focus on the worldly things, they never interested about the kingdom of God. They never interested about the gospel, about the Lord Jesus. They couldn't recognize. Even Jesus said, look at the verse 5, he called out to them, friend, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. 
three and a half years ago, Jesus spoke to Peter through your net in where? Deep inside the water. Three and a half years ago, Jesus called them. They obey immediately and they left everything. And three and a half years special training. But when Jesus died, their hope gone. Their expectation is gone. And they are in the hopeless. But Jesus reminds them. It's like Obore, do you understand? Three and a half years ago, I told you through your net in deep water, you catch a plenty of fish. But now Jesus said to them, through your net in where? Where? Right side of the boat, you will find some. When they did, they were unable to hold the net in it because of large number of fish. This is different. Now they realize that. <laughs> no, look at the verse 7. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved. Who is this man? John. John said to Peter, It is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his out garment around him and for he had taken off and jumped into the water. Three and a half years ago, Jesus spoke to Peter through your net in deep water. He catches the plenty of fish. And then Peter, he said to the disciples, I'm going out to fish. And all the disciples say, oh, we'll come with you. There's no fruit. If you run away from your calling, there's no fruit. Good news for you. If there's fruit, you continue to run away from calling of God. You see, disciples, they realize that. Now, this is very interesting. John, beloved uh, disciples, is always John. John is discovered. <coughs> it is the law. When he say it is the law, Peter jump into the water. Do you think Peter tried the suicide? Why? <laughs> Do you remember when Jesus met Peter and uh, Peter obey? He said, because you say so, I threw my net in the deep water. He catch the plenty fish. And he said, uh, go away from me. I'm a sinner. Three and a half years ago, he recognized him uh, he's a sinner. Same things. And he didn't say, I'm a sinner, but he recognized uh, I'm a terrible sinner. I'm a cheap sinner. That kind of mean express. Obey God immediately. If you obey God immediately, you will see the glory of the law. Obey God immediately. Obey now. Do it now. Now. Finally, you can see the some more scripture why this man, King Saul, disobey God. Do you know? People disobey God because of this kind of things. Look at the 1 Samuel chapter 15. <coughs> 1 Samuel chapter 15. One Samuel chapter 15 verse 9. 1 Samuel 15 verse 9, I can read for you. Sa Saul and the army spared Aga, the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat uh, calves and lambs, everything that was good. These uh, and this they were unwilling to destroy completely. But everything that was d despised and uh, weak, they totally destroyed. When God spoke to, when God spoke to the King Saul and to, through the Samuel, when you go to the uh, in a battle, you need to kill all the uh, army of this uh, uh, enemy. And then this uh, enemy. Is a king is Aga, but he didn't. This man he didn't kill. The king of Amalekites, King Aga, he King Saul must kill. You know, when King Saul didn't kill the king of Amalekites, he just uh, make him prisoner. What people say about King Saul, he become more proud. You see, we kept a prisoner now. He's a king. King of Amalekai, you see? <coughs> terrible, make him terrible chain and then make a slave. And King Saul become more proud. And what the Bible say? King Saul, he 
didn't destroy everything. What is order? Everything. Destroy everything. King, Agai, every soldiers, even every, you know, how can you call it, collect all these things from, from enemy camp? Wages, the no. spoils uh, of wars. What? Spoils. Spoils. All these things from the enemy's camp. He must destroy. But he collected. For whom? Himself. For himself. Do you know he become proud? He become <laughs> selfish man. Mm -hmm. That is why he disobey God. Do you know if you're a selfish man, you never obey. When you have uh, some very nice things, <laughs> you want to use it. But God say, can I have can you give to somebody? How can you give if you are a selfish man? Me, 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 me. No, impossible. Yeah? Look at the verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 12. <coughs> Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went, went to meet Saul. But he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has uh, turned and uh, gone on down to Gilgal. <coughs> what he saw, he was uh, so, so proud man. He made a monument for, him, for himself. You see, be careful. Jesus say, somebody said, Lord, Lord, I do this thing and that thing. Jesus, I don't know you. Go away from me, you evildoers. Some people, they, they do something for themselves. They made some ornament some monument. Yeah? King Saul he did. He disobeyed God. Why? Because he's so selfish man. Why? Because he was so proud. If you become very proud man, it is impossible to obey what God said to you. Look at the verse 17, same chapter, 1 Samuel 15. Samuel said, all through you are once small in your own eyes. Did you not become the head of the tribe of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel. When you're humble, God give you grace and anoint you as king of Israel. But now you are not. You become very proud man. Therefore God oppose you, cut against you. Samuel explained to him. Look at verse 22. <clears throat> Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in the burnt offerings and sacrifice as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to head is better than the fat of the Lord. He say, please make sure, honor me <laughs> in front of all the Israelites. He say, please uh, honor me before elders of my people and before Israel. That kind of attitude. He never ever repented of sins. That is why God rejected him. You know what God said? If you look at the verse 23, 1 Samuel chapter 15, 23, for rebellion is like the sin of the divination, <coughs> arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, God has rejected you as a king. When you reject the word of God, God rejected you. When you disobey God, bye-bye, you are gone. For all of you and me, please obey. Whenever God says something for you and me, you can obey. Unfortunately, people, they don't obey because of uh, uncomfortable. Why? It's uh, uncomfortable. Well, you know, the, that situation is very, very difficult to obey. This man, King Saul, say, Oh, honor me, honor me. Even I disobey God, honor me in front of all these people. <laughs> that kind of uh, attitude. And then people, they disobey because of uh, uh, convenience. That convenience is not a very good situation. But you have to obey God. <coughs> what does it mean, obey God? As I told you earlier, you can see every miracle in the Bible, every 100% miracle after somebody denied themselves, denied their knowledge, denied their emotion, 
deny their will and you can see the miracles of the Lord deny yourself what does it mean you need to deny your emotion even sometimes uncomfortable deny everything and then you can obey when you obey God you can see the amazing amazing and uh, got your favor got your answer obey God now three kind of obedience obey God instantly obey God 100% obey God constantly obey God let's pray dear Heavenly Father help us to obey you instantly 100% constantly in Jesus name we pray Amen thank you it's a, today is a very nice weather we go to the mountain a very nice weather raining and the wind and then we go to the mountain and pray Every Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay.